Hello and welcome everyone, this is Mr. Umath with a new series about the Taylor series, no pun intended. Now actually what I want to do in this series is to really start off by the motivation of the Taylor series and a little bit of the derivation and then go ahead and uh, see what you can do with the Taylor series with a few examples on special functions in their Taylor series and so forth and I know I actually have already a play a list about the Taylor series but I think um, I just wanted to do it more formally more interesting with um, a lot of more applications okay so this is uh, the series and this is the only Taylor series um, I wanna really continue on okay so let's just start off with the motivation about the Taylor series now where we start off is a simple problem that you might know out of school or in university or everywhere this should be something very very simple that you should know how to solve. Now this is a quadratic equation that we have. We have coefficients a0, a1 and a2 and what we want to know is we want to find out these coefficients when we only know these three things. First of all we know the value of the function in x equals 0. We know the value of the function for the first derivative in x equals 0 and we know the value of the function for the second derivative in x equals 0. Now you all know how to solve that I hope. The, in order to find a0 you would plug in um, just x equals 0 because these types here, these polynomials, just cancel and we only have a constant term and so f of 0 is equal to a0. Then you would go ahead and differentiate this guy and then plug in 0 again in the first derivative and then you would find out that a1 is equal to this guy and then you would differentiate it a second time and then realize that you get twice a2 equals this guy. Okay, and this is what we want to do. So let's just start off. We take uh, the first derivative, actually not the first derivative, but the zeroth derivative, sometimes it's called, it's the function itself, and we plug in x equals zero. You see these, uh, the linear term and the quadratic term will cancel. We get a constant value, a zero. So f of zero is equal to a zero. Now the second derivative, or sorry, I'm just, <laughs> the second thing that we want to calculate is the first derivative of the function. Now if you differentiate that guy, you will get this to cancel, you get a1 plus 2 times a2x. Okay, this is exactly what I wrote down. Now let's evaluate at x equals 0. You see that this guy will cancel and we get f of prime and x equals 0 is equal to a1. Now let's go ahead and take the second derivative. Now if we do the second derivative, let's see what happens with this if we differentiate it twice. It is constant, so it will vanish. If we have a linear term and you differentiate it twice, you get a1 in the first derivative, in the second you get 0, so this vanishes also. And the last term that is left is this guy. If we differentiate it once, we get 2a2. If you differentiate it again, we get 2 multiplied with 1 a two and that's it. Why did I say two multiplied with one? You will see shortly why this is important. Because if you would have another term in here plus a three x cubed, then you would have to differentiate it three times and then you would have three multiplied with two multiplied with one multiplied with a three. Okay, so you see this is some kind of pattern appearing here, so actually I could write down here 1, here 2 times 1, and then for the third derivative evaluated in 0, we would have 3 multiplied with 2 multiplied with 1 multiplied with a3. Now let's just resubstitute the stuff that we found out in this function and get a, an interesting pattern here. So we can write down f of x equals f evaluated at 0 plus f prime evaluated 0 over 1 factorial plus um, f double prime evaluated at 0 over 2 factorial x cubed. Now you might say why 2 factorial? What is this? 2 factorial is nothing else than taking um, all the integer, all the no natural numbers until 2 and multiplying them. For 2 factorial it's 1 and 2. 
So actually it's simply two. If you take three factorial, this means three multiplied with two multiplied with one. Now what we could also do is even think further and say, wow, actually I could think of having here coefficients a 3x cubed, but a 3 is equal to 0 in all the higher order uh, terms you could imagine here, for example, x to the 4 with a 4 and so forth, and they all have a coefficient of 0. So we could actually expand this kind of expression and say that our function here above is nothing else than this strange looking series okay you see that and then here would come uh, the fourth derivative evaluated at x equals 0 over 4 factorial x uh, 4 now why did I write it down like this with infinitely many because now you could think of a arbitrary function think of any function that you want actually we cannot do this for all functions for example think of the exponential function then what you could do is you could take um, or better you could assume that this is written as a polynomial with infinitely many terms in it so a plus a 3x cubed plus a 4x to the 4 and so forth you would add infinitely many and then you could try to find out these values here, these coefficients, and they would be calculated the exact same way. Okay, um, we will do later on, but now let's have a look what will happen if we have a more complicated kind of expression and we we actually don't know the values at zero, but for example, we know the values at x naught. Okay, if we know the values at x naught, the principle stays the same. We just take the function, plug in x0, and then what we have here, all these brackets will cancel and we are left with a0. Now let's do the first derivative. The first derivative of this guy is uh, pretty easy. a0 will uh, um, is a constant number, so it will cancel or have a derivative of 0. Now this is a1, the, the power of 1 moved in front of it, and because we have x minus x naught to the zeroth power, this is um, equal to 1. So we have 1 multiplied with a1, plugging in x naught, what will happen is that all these higher order terms will vanish. Okay, so we are left with 1 multiplied with a1. Now let's do the same thing for the second derivative. We differentiate this twice you see this is a linear term if you differentiate a linear function twice it will become zero so uh, the things that matter are this guy and they don't matter because we are going to plug in x naught anyway so they will cancel so this is interesting so if we mm, differentiate this twice we get 2 a uh, 2 a 2 x minus x naught to the first power and if we differentiate again we get 2 multiplied with 1 multiplied with a2 and x minus x naught to the zeroth power is equal to 1 so we have 2 multiplied with 1 multiplied with a2 and this guy here will cancel out so we are left with this doing the same thing for the third derivative again we see that this is a quadratic equation or a quadratic polynomial differentiating this three times will give you zero so this is not important and differentiating this guy three times we get first of all the three then we get a two then a one and then we are at the constant level of a three and here I wrote in another higher term for a for uh, x minus x naught to the fourth power. You could imagine that here. And if you differentiated this three times, you get four multiplied with three multiplied with two multiplied with a four um, x naught minus x naught to the first power because we are evaluating this in x naught. And then you have three multiplied with two multiplied with one multiplied with a three as the result. Now I think you can smell the pattern. You see, if this is the third derivative, then we have the three factorial a of three. Okay, and if we have the nth derivative and we evaluate that in x naught, then we have n multiplied with n minus 1 multiplied with uh, 
all the integer, uh, all the natural numbers to 2 multiplied by 1 multiplied by a n. Now we can write this guy in a more compact version using the factorial, so this is n factorial a n, and then we divide by n factorial and we get this formula for these coefficients. So actually if you know your function you can find all these values of um, coefficients by simply taking the derivatives, evaluating them at, at x0 and then dividing by the order of the derivative. Okay, now let's comprehend. We found out that if you have any function, actually you cannot do this for every function, but for example you could do this for the exponential function. We have the exponential function and we want to evaluate the Taylor series in x0, then what we do is just we take these coefficients we take the nth derivative of our exponential function, evaluate it in x0, and divide it by uh, n factorial. Okay. Now what do we get by doing this? If we replace this guy into the upper equation, and I'm just using a um, formula here, f to the 0th power x0 over 0th factorial. Actually, you could imagine having here a bracket in front, x minus x0 to the 0th power here in um, after this guy. And then we have f to the first, the first derivative evaluated in x0 over 1 factorial x minus x0 plus the second derivative evaluated in x0 over 2 factorial and so forth. So now we can write it in a more compact form. Uh, as this, okay, just a sum, we plug in 0, we get 0 factorial, uh, the 0th derivative of a function is just defined as the function itself, and uh, the 0th derivative is equal to 1, uh, sorry, the 0th uh, factorial, the uh, factorial of 0 is just equal to 1. Now, it's also called the empty product, that this is equal to 1. Uh, now, what we have in here is that if you are adding all these terms up you get this function as a Taylor series. Now what is important about this is uh, that first of all we should be able to differentiate it so this method doesn't work if your function is not differentiable so and if it's not continuous then it's um, not differentiable anyway so important thing is to note that this function should be infinitely times differentiable first point. The second point that is important for us is that somehow if we are adding infinitely many terms one could question himself does this have a meaningful value and this is the topic of convergence I won't bother here to talk a lot about convergence but what you can uh, deduce from that is that this kind of series does not always converge for every value of x okay so for some functions like the exponential sine and cosine you can plug in any value for x and this will uh, converge but there are some functions that they uh, have a radius of convergence that is called um, that is not infinite but finite. Now let's have a look at this. This is called the cauchy hadamard theorem and when calculating the radius of convergence what you have to do is you take 1 over the limit for n equals uh, to infinity and then what you take is you take the superior uh, the supremum of them the highest value that you get out of this okay and then you have the, your radius of convergence. This is a little bit harder uh, to calculate than the second version which is just if you remember the quotient criterion for uh, convergent sums or sometimes called the, the d'Alembert crit criterion um, or quotient criterion. Um, this is easier to calculate so actually these coefficients are called a n and if you take a n and uh, divide this by a n plus 1 so actually you have the um, nth plus 1 derivative and so forth but this kind of representation is a little bit limited than this but you get the same uh, radius of convergence so you plug this in if this is existing then you have finite radius of convergence and here you can actually have also a zero in here 
And what this means actually is that if you have 1 over 0 is infinite, so your radius of convergence is infinitely large, for example for your exponential function sine and cosine. Finite um, radius you have for example for the logarithm, for the geometric series, for the arc as 10, uh, arc tangents, or I don't know how it's called in English, uh, you know the inverse, uh, the inverse of the tan, tan tangents function or tan function. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you see some linguistic problems. I hope they don't bother you on the mathematical level. Now what is important about this is why am I talking about the radius of convergence? Because it's very natural to think of this x variable as a complex variable and uh, generalize this idea of Taylor polynomials called power sums for complex numbers and then you have a in the complex plane <clears throat> Sorry, in the complex plane you have a circle in which this function here really expresses this function f of x and outside of this radius you have no convergence and very importantly actually you have to be smaller than this radius of convergence. What happens on the radius of convergence is not it's not known per se so you have to really um, look at it and uh, look if it's converging and if it's meaningful and so forth. Now actually if you, we are talking about real numbers then this is just the magnitude of the convergence, so the interval of convergence. Your series will converge between plus and minus r. Okay. Yes, and actually that's it. Now a little uh, word of motivation for you to head onwards with the Taylor series is where do we need the Taylor series? First of all, you can use the Taylor series for uh, cracking really hard problems in physics. So it's a very easy uh, thing to look at a differential equation and then try to solve it by the method of power sums. And this often works quite good. Okay, sometimes it doesn't work, but who cares? Sometimes it really works good. Now, another problem that you can do is if you have a differential equation that is very, very hard, then you can take um, the Taylor series of one of the functions that makes this problem hard and then break it up after a few parts and say that your x is pretty, pretty small, that the error of the higher order terms is pretty, pretty small, so you are pretty good at the estimate. And um, you can also use uh, these guys, these Taylor series, for finding out um, the irrationality of uh, the Euler number E. And uh, you can do a lot of funny stuff with that. You can find uh, series expressions for pi, for E, for every strange number that you can think of. And um, I hope this is really motivating you to really go out and tell all your friends about this cool Taylor series and I know a lot of them will like it and <laughs> even more will hate you for that and maybe beat you up so be prepared to run or to fight back okay <laughs> that's it I hope you had fun watching this video and I hope you stay tuned watching these videos because there are a lot of new videos coming on the Taylor series and other videos about mathematics in general. So, um, like always, if you still have some questions, feel free to comment. I will try to answer your questions um, as fast as possible. And uh, that's it. I hope you had fun and see you guys.